Now, 90% of the country's 1,920 schools opened for face-to-face -face teaching and learning this week. Now, according to the Ministry of Basic of Education, five to eight weeks of the new academic year will be used for revision since pupils only attended classes for about three months last year. Joining me in studio this morning to talk about the resilient plan for education is Deputy Executive Director of Formal Education at the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Ida Bon. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Nina. Good morning to the nation. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Now, COVID-19 has really forced us sort of to rethink and re-strategize and, and redesign the provisions for education uh, within the country in a way that best meets the needs of teachers and learners alike. Uh, what would you say, just to start with, you know, are some, were some of the biggest obstacles or challenges that the education sector faced uh, during, has faced during this pandemic? We in education you have very structured plans for example the master plan is actually the curriculum that translates into what has to be learned when and that means the various syllabi for every grade for every subject so it's very structured and this is within a certain time context mm -hmm. given in a certain time context we speak of 195 to 205 uh, school days that are needed to cover that curriculum or that learning content. Mm -hmm. So COVID with the lockdown and the limitations of going to school, even when we opened school, then we had um, the cohort based, time based cohorts. Uh, that means not every learner was at school every day. Mm -hmm. So there was still actually effectively less uh, time than those days that we did open school. For, for the teachers and the learners. So that means you have to be flexible and creative, how to still master the learning content to some extent that we can proceed because it, we adopted the principle that we want to um, move on because life goes on. Right. We have to cope with the uh, effects of the pandemic and uh, mitigate all, all the negative mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, comes with it. Mm -hmm. So that was our prerogative. And with this, we then uh, rationalized, that means reduced some of the learning content to the core competent, core skills, so to say, because no matter what you learn, you learn certain skills through that l content, skills that enable you later in life to function meaningfully. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, with us, it was um, then to, to call on to expertise that happened already in May, June, July in that time uh, last year that we called on expertise to really analyze the learning content to what are the core skills and uh, which activities, which subjects lend themselves, so to say. Mm -hmm. What we also need to realize is that the learning content builds on a spiral from the most concrete to the abstract and certain concepts and ideas on, and uh, certain uh, knowledge is repeated to be um, age appropriate at every level. And, uh, with that repetition, of course, t comes time. Yeah. So if we reduce a little bit repetition then, uh, of the learning content, then uh, you also free some time. So that is what we have done. And especially also when it comes to cross-curricular issues uh, to, to um, streamline in such a way that we free some time to catch up, yeah. so yeah. to say. And that is what we mean by uh, the uh, resilience plan in caps encapsulates all these uh, activities that we have uh, laid out for us to make it work mm -hmm. because life goes on yeah. and we have to learn to cope and we cannot fall f further behind because uh, learning and education altogether builds on these, you know, uh, windows of opportunity where, you know, the cognitive uh, structure and, and development of our young is, is aligned to what the learning or the exposure to learning um, 
enable can enable them but if you leave the young idle then you know <laughs> there are also problems to that then they cannot develop the good potential that they actually have so that is uh, based on these principles that we have come up with this plan and what is expected from schools as part of the implementation of this resilience plan yeah number one of course always to assess it's part of a professional um, uh, workload of a teacher to always uh, gorge where the learners are. That means to do this uh, diagnostic baseline assessment, <laughs> not a formal, but to some extent a formal assessment of mm -hmm. the learners, because the teacher will know exactly what are the prerequisites for the current, for the new learning content of the new grade where the learners find themselves in. Yeah. So with, through this bi baseline or diagnostic assessment, we will, uh, they will know exactly where the gaps are, where they have to reinforce and so to say catch up to get them all on one level. Yeah. What this also means is that we would have like uh, a semi-multi-grade teaching in one grade because some learners might have been falling more behind than others in, in, the, uh, in this uh, last year of, of 2020. So they, uh, with that, they have to, you know, diversify their approaches, which will be very difficult. And in this process, we also call on the parents and guardians to encourage and support the, their children, but most of all on the children and learners themselves to be well disciplined and, you know, to, to go with the flow and, and make this work. Mm -hmm. Because if, if there are more disruptions, it would be just be to the <laughs> detriment. Yeah, yeah. Now, schools are also required to continue with the implementation of the rationalized syllabi for primary and then from grade one up into grade nine. Um, just to please elaborate on the meaning of this rationalized uh, syllabus. Yeah, syllabus. We, <laughs> syllabus. Yes, syllabus yeah. yes. The learning content, we mm -hmm. basically say mm -hmm. that we reduced around uh -huh, about 30%. Uh -huh. And uh, through that, uh, allow them to catch up. And uh, with that, um, what we say is that these course, core skills that need to be developed, for example, communication or mm -hmm. learning how to learn and, and uh, numeracy skills, analytical skills and so on, they can be developed through various learning content. So mm -hmm. it's not so much, yes, there are certain things that they have to know, like, you know, there is this basis which you have to know before you can actually manipulate the mm -hmm. facts and, mm -hmm. and, you know, s analyze and synthesize. So uh, the, the, um, the expectation is that the teachers, of course, work together collaboratively to, to make this work. That means you, the receiving teacher will have to be in contact with the previous one. For example, if we have the most junior primary would be the pre-primary, that's now part of formal education and grade one. But we also know that we have limitations for pre-primary. Not all learners have a chance to get into a mm -hmm. pre-primary because our um, available space is, is not yet 100%. So those learners who might have missed out on pre-primary, they still have to seek, uh, that means their parents have to seek admission into grade one. Mm -hmm. We do not want them to fall more behind, but then there will be that uh, catch-up program, these this five to six, uh, weeks, five to yeah. eight weeks uh, where they uh, go through what we call for pre-primary, the school readiness during grade one to bring them all to that level where, you know, those who had the privilege to be in in uh, pre-primary. So uh, we do not want to c leave out anybody. Yeah. Even those who did not manage to return to school, they have to report back to school. They unfortunately would have to repeat because mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, what we need to understand also is certain foundations must be laid yeah. first before you can continue. Of course. So you were, we were specifying now for this um, mm -hmm. last question, the, the junior primary to junior secondary right. as one phase. We did not reduce or change anything on the senior secondary. That is now grade 10 and 11, because that is externally examined. That is this national school leaving examination leading to the certificate, the NSSCO, and then to be followed yeah. at, at with the AS level. Now that learning content has not changed. And so it is very important that uh, teachers and learners make 
the most of this year, say the grade tens of last year, to catch up, to be ready for the final exams in this year because they lost out a lot. So we were saying if uh, a grade 10 learner that who is now would have processed to uh, progress to grade 11 and has not mastered the basic competence, it's advisable and it's also part of the promotion policy and curriculum that they would have to repeat mm -hmm. because otherwise it would end up just in a waste of economic resources because we do pay uh, internationally high fees for this examination to be executed and accredited and then we would not want to waste resources. So it's very important that grade 10 and 11 is uh, done in full and to, to enable the learners to, to achieve good school leaving mm -hmm. marks. And obviously we know that the impact of, of this COVID-19 pandemic has created more, um, you know, diversity amongst learners in schools. Um, and obviously now it's essential to strengthen uh, learning support in all classes for all subjects. So what does that learning support involve? As a teacher, as I said earlier, the, a professional teacher, you will know exactly what are the requirements to, to meet uh, the, uh, you know, the, the basic competencies for a particular phase. And so in, in learning support, we would uh, be able to analyze and observe and judge where the learners um, fall short mm -hmm. and uh, design a recovery program, so to say, for the learners in, uh, in order to get there. So uh, those, those programs are worked out through our curriculum experts and uh, a training program is uh, has started even last year already to capacitate the teachers to give uh, meaningful learning support mm -hmm. to establish actually the learning styles of the learners and then to articulate because we all have a different way how mm -hmm. to learn and it is uh, important that uh, that diversity is introduced into the class to stimulate everybody every learner meaningfully to to be able to achieve. So that, that program is worked out and the, the teachers will be further cap capacitated mm -hmm. to roll it out. All right. Now, the ministry also released the standing operating procedures for schools, um, you know, to, that must, they must to adhere to when dealing with the COVID-19 related matters. Perhaps as we round up our discussion this morning, you can just talk to us about how, what this uh, standing operating procedure entails. Yeah, that these are... Uh, sort of uh, encapsulate and, and summarize all the information we have given, but also the pointers from the Ministry of Health and Social Services, how to deal with a certain situation. So it gives the, the, the guidelines of, you know, the temperature measurement, the um, sanit sanitizing, washing of hands and so on. What happens if mm -hmm. a learner falls sick? then the, those procedures are laid out. It's, it, it explains in detail how we, should re, how we would respond to every situation. Mm -hmm. And if a school would not have these uh, documents, then they have to be, get in touch with the um, regional or circuit inspector mm -hmm. first. And then they, if they cannot uh, succeed there, the, uh, the chief education officers, um, the Th those for programs and quality assurance, the deputy directors in the regions to assist them with these documents. Because we also see that sometimes the communication line breaks down because of various reasons, whether it's the internet or so. So it's important that everybody has access to these documents. Yeah. All right, Mrs. Ban, your final remarks this morning? Yeah, I just uh, would like to encourage everyone to to make the best of the situation. And uh, even if we have to, you know, do multi-grade teaching within a particular grade now, I mean, as we said, the diversity of levels is there. We should not become frustrated of that, but embrace it as an opportunity to make a difference in the life of these, uh, these children and learners and then the community at large. And most of all, that this is not a one-way process of the Ministry of Education to the learners out there, mm -hmm. but that the community involvement is equally important. Education is a shared responsibility. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for your time and thank you for being here. Thank you. That was uh, Ms. Ida Bon from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture speaking to us this morning. We'll be right back.